Hello and welcome back to the Synapse Sessions where this time we've gone a little bit power platform. So this whole week I've been doing a hell of a lot of Databricks training, teaching people all about the weird and wonderful world of Spark. And um, one of the requests I came with is, can you include how you get data into the CDM, the Common Data Model, or the CDS, the Common Data Service, and what it is? And um, from Spark, trying to get data from Spark into like the power platform elements is always a bit of a, can you do that? And turns out you can. So I've been having a look at how that fits in and how that fits in in Synapse. So there's a couple of different ways of doing that in Synapse. Um, we're going to have a look at how that works. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you find the video useful and let us know what you think. Okay, so we're going to start off with just a quick explanation of how things are working. So if you've not heard of it before, there's these two things, the common data model and the common data service. And it's really bad. People just confuse what they are and disagree about what the different definitions are. The diagrams are all over the place in terms of what people refer to each thing as. The best definition I saw was on Reza Rad's description, which was saying that common data model is essentially a data model. It's the metadata that describes a load of structures. And that is an out of the box descriptor for a load of really common data entities. Kind of the canonical model kind of thing where say, I'm gonna talk about the contact. And we define this common thing saying anyone, whether you're in retail, whether you're in marketing, whether you are in life sciences, whatever it happens to be, contact's going to be the same. You've got title, first name, middle name, last name, all the kind of generic things that we know about a person. And so it's that. It's kind of, here's just a load of default off-the-shelf entities, and you go, I'm going to make a data set. It's going to have that, 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 that. And then you can add some custom ones to yourself. So that's the data model, is that descriptions and definitions. And the common data service is the actual store of data. So I'm, I'm using that structure I get from the common data model. I'm making a new common data service with a load of data in there. That's kind of the definition that made sense to me. Doesn't always seem that way across all the documentation, but we'll see. So in here, we've got the um, quick diagram just showing this is what it's for. It's this integration layer. It's a common language we can talk between Dynamics, between the Power Platform, so Power BI, Power Apps, all of that kind of stuff and then the Azure Data Platform. And that's like, I've always been a big missing link for me. So I'm generally over on the power, uh, on the power platform, generally over on the Azure Data Platform side. Oh, I'm using Data Factory and building legs, using Databricks, using Synapse Analytics these days, all doing all that kind of stuff. And there isn't really that good communication with the rest of the Power Platform. Now this bit works, saying I can give Power BI my data, sure. Power BI can go and query Databricks, it can query the lake in some elements, it can query a lot of the existing Azure Data Platform stuff. But it, the rest of the Power Platform feels a little bit left out in the cold. So if we implement this, if we have the common data service in there, and we have this as this, basically an interchange layer. So we have all of our stuff going on in the data platform, we spit data out, and then we push it and make it accessible to Power Apps, to Power Automate, used to be called Power Flow, or Microsoft Flow, or something else, I don't know, uh, and Power BI and all that kind of stuff. So it's this common language that we can put in the middle of our different, various different data platforms, which makes a lot of sense. So early this year, there was a bit of a shift. So it's a little bit confusing, and there's two different definitions, two different ways of working with the common data service. The, the older way, and the way that's automatically used by Power Platform and Power BI Data Flows currently, is this model.json approach. So essentially, you put all your data there, it organizes all of your data in CSV files, in Parquet files, and this is when you're using the Data Lake version. So there's a version of the Common Data Service which lives out in the cloud, put up Power Platform, that has data in it, uh, and it's accessible to things in the Power Platform. But you can say, I want to sync you, parts of my CDS, with a Data Lake, and it stores the, the Common Data Service in a Data Lake with its own entity metadata, with its own file structures. This is what we're talking about. So if you do that from Power Platform, it'll use this approach, model.json. You have a JSON file with a massive schema definition, and then you have your data stored in various folders. So early this year, I think it was around April this year, they came up with this manifest approach. And that's kind of similar, but it's breaking up where that metadata lives. So you still have folder structures, and your data can be stored in either CSV or Parquet. Can't be Delta, sadly. Um, and then you have different manifest files. So manifest file describing this manifest contains entities A, B, and C. This one contains A, B, and D. And so you can break up and have different combinations of entities. You can have separation. And it makes it much more scalable in terms of how many entities you're trying to have rather than just one whacking great 
um, JSON file that describes it. So be aware that there is a slight difference depending on how you've set up your CDS. It might be using one way or the other. And the different tools we're going to look at use one way or the other, which is kind of annoying, but still. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to work with. Hopefully it all makes sense. Okay, so first things first, I created that. I had to create a common data service. And I did that through Power BI. Not Power BI, Power Apps. So in Power Apps, we've got this here. We've got our data area. So I went into data. I was playing around with entities. There's some entities that I've already enabled. And I created some uh, entities. So under taxis, I've got my taxi summary entity. So I went in here, I clicked new entity, I've changed the fields around. So I've got my taxi count, my taxi summary, my total amount, just some custom fields. Uh, and I created that and I saved that. And most importantly, I, um, I turned on this change tracking. So you need to have that turned on if you want to sync this to your lake. It can say no unless you've got it turned on. Essentially, it's kind of enabling CDC on a SQL table. It's a similar kind of thing. And then finally, we have this button the export to data lake. I want this to go down into my data lake version of my CDS, please. And if someone enters data into here, I want that to flow through and go to my lake. So I've, had, I've already associated my lakes. I've got my advancing ADLS is associated here. You can do the same over here. So under my data, I've got my export to lake. I can see which entities are currently synced. And I can see what's going on in there. So you can see some of them have got counts against it. And there's no sync for the ones that don't have a count. It needs to have data in there for it to actually create some of the folder structures and things. If you don't have any data in there, you won't see anything in your CDS. So make sure it's got some data. Hit sync, it'll go and push it out. Okay, so if you want more info about that manifest versus uh, the model JSON, so they've got a load of stuff on the, um, on the blogs. I'll drop a link uh, down below talking about manifest versus model. Uh, but the main thing is look and have a look at our lake. So I've got my advancing ADLS. And most importantly, it's got its own container. It's got its own separate file system in the hierarchical namespace. Um, so you can't have it plumbed in. I don't believe you can have it jammed into the same place as all of your other lake data. It's another file system that sits alongside it. So I've got this one. This is one that's created automatically, so it's given it a lovely name for me. Uh, and then I can see all my entities that have been synced. And I've got that model.json down the bottom. So we have a look at what's in there. It's just got this uh, horrendous giant pile of here's all of the metadata for all of the structures I've asked to be synced. So it's kind of just huge pile of metadata. So the other ones, the ones that I've created elsewhere, so by using Spark or by using kind of uh, some of the connectors, they go via the manifest approach. So you can see I've got this taxi summary, for example, it's got in there and it has this manifest file. So that's slightly different in that that's now got this its own little metadata describing just that entity and kind of uh, ones related to that corpus. So slightly different. Uh, and then if I dig into there, I've got my definition and my schema is now held just against that file. So I don't have this one huge, huge thing of all my schemas. I can have my separate schema files being changed and moved around. But that's created for me. So the hard thing, if you're saying, I want something to insert data into my common data model, the data itself, it's just stored as X, uh, CSV or Parquet. That's, there's nothing special about how the data is stored. The hard thing is updating all of this metadata, all these different complementary JSON files that describe it. They're the bits why we need a special connector to talk to the CDS, because it needs to know how to talk to all of that metadata. So luckily, we do have Spark connectors. So we can go and do this out of the box. So in signups, got a few things. So I went and grabbed an example, uh, and I'll show you where to get that. But just to quickly show you what's going on, I've got a Spark session. My session's running. It's nice. So I'm just telling it, this is the name of my lake. So my lake's held here, and my container's held here, and that's my lovely container name again. Uh, I'm importing a load of libraries, which was just used in terms of making this mock data. Uh, and then I'm actually not using that. That's all from the demo data. So I'm just creating this real basic data frame. So this isn't inserting the data anywhere. I'm just saying, okay, there's a, some fake taxi data. My new taxi service is called Lifty. I've had five taxis and I made £5.50, so I'm actually a terrible taxi driver. I don't make a lot of money. Um, giving it a structure and then applying a type of that structure and then it's bringing it as a data frame. That's kind of a long way of saying, I'm just mocking up some sample data. So it's going off, making some sample data. So there we go. I have a data frame. Looks like that. My Lifty. Five, five, five. Just some super easy sample data. Okay, then the interesting part. 
So I've got this format for doing a write. So I'm doing data frame dot write, saying the format option is com.microsoft.cdn. So that is a special connector. That is a library for connecting via Spark and using CDN structures, CDN structures, depending on who you talk to. Um, now in Synapse, that's baked in. So I didn't have to go and attach anything to my Spark cluster. I didn't have to change my config. I didn't have to set up my environment uh, configuration so it pulls down that library. That just pre-installed on your cluster by default. Need to give it a few options. So the storage account name. So that's the one that we defined up here. So that's going and just taking the name of my storage account. And then giving it the container name. Don't know where to go and find that. And then the manifest path. So where does it need to go and create this new manifest bit of uh, JSON metadata? I'm telling it what to call it, and I'm telling it the format. So let's call it, give this a new name. So that we know, let's call it Synapse Session. And we'll do the same down here. We'll do other taxis. And we're just going to run that. So that doesn't exist currently. So this is going to create a new entity that's not been seen before my, by my common data service, put it into my lake, put the relevant metadata into my lake. Uh, and so we should be able to go and see that when this is finished as a new structure with the relevant metadata and everything set up inside my lake, but with the right stuff. So that's super interesting. And that, as it worked, so that succeeded, is a really, really easy way of getting data actually into my CDS. So let's go and have a look at my lake again. Let's go up to the top. So we can now see we've got sign up session. So we can see it's created that new entity folder. I've got my new manifest that's giving me the metadata just for that CDS session. So where it's going to live, what the manifest file is called, all of that stuff. I can go and have a look. So I've got my data files. So I can see it's created a load of Parquet files for me. Uh, and I can see the logical definition. So I should be able to see schema in here. So I can see the schema inside that Parquet file has been saved down. So that's great. It's done all the hard bit of understanding the metadata structure, figuring out how to jam it into that CDS structure is all baked into that Spark connector. That's awesome. So if I want to do that in other Spark elements, if I want to do that over in the um, Databricks land, then I can do the same. So this is Databricks. So I've got a notebook, it's exactly the same notebook. So I'm just pulling in, referencing my details, pulling in the libraries. In this case, I've got a much more complicated example. So I'm just bringing in quite a complex data structure. So you can see my data, it's got a nested array. It's got a nested array inside that. It's got nested, nested, nested arrays. So it's, a com it's making sure I can train complex data and structures in there. Going through, calling the same stuff. You can see what the data looks like. And again, I'm calling that same library. And that works. So I can do it in any Spark structure I'm using. The only difference is, in Synapse, I didn't have to do any config. In Databricks, I had to install a library. So we're going to have a look at my cluster, got it turned off. So you can see I've got this com.microsoft.azure Spark CDM connector installed. Now, the dangerous thing is that version number is 0.16. And that tells us that is an early release. That is a preview. It's not reached version one yet. That is a prototype. Um, so be a little bit careful with it. It doesn't seem like it's a production ready, really robust, use this for your life um, kind of library yet. It is a little bit early days in there. Um, but still, you can get it in Maven. It is properly on there. So I just went into Maven, popped in that coordinate, pulled it down, and it's all good. Now, I have a word of warning. So Googling around when I was first trying to find out, how do I, how do, I do Spark CDM? I found two. So the Spark-CDM-Connector in the Azure uh, GitHub repo. And this is the good one. This is the one that's got everything in there. You can see this has got, you can see where I got my demo from. Uh, this is the exact same demo I've just pulled in. And this has got some really nice demos of doing a write to an existing entity, doing a write to create an entity on the fly, updating an entity. All of that stuff is in here. So it's got loads of really, really good examples. So we go back to the root. It's got loads of stuff in there, really good documentation. Tells you a lot about it. Tells you how to find it in Maven. So spark cdm connector loads of good stuff. And the thing that we know, if you're looking at a GitHub and going, should I trust it? One of the things is just how often people are updating it. And it is an active repository. People are constantly contributing into this repo. Now, on the other side, there is spark-cdm. And this looks older. It hasn't been committed to for quite a while. Um, and this... It's got some examples, but the documentation's nowhere near as good. So it's like an older version of this same one. It looks like they've forked the repos. Definitely, if I was you, I'd stick with the Spark CDM connector. Okay? So Spark CDM connector works. Try it out in Databricks and Synapse. It's baked into Synapse by default. Happy days. All things are good. And the main thing to know is that is using the new manifest approach. 
So you're loading data in. If you've done everything previously via that model.json, this is going to load the entities in a different format, a different structure. And there's no real harm in that. They'll still go and still work. But when things are talking to it, it'll need to know which way to approach it. It's a little bit awkward. So that's method one of getting data into CDS. And this is good if I don't have an existing entity. On the other side, I've got Power BI, no, not Power BI, I've got data flows. So data factory data flows, whether it's inside signups or whether it's in uh, data factory on its own, now has the ability to talk to the CDS. So if I'm inside, I've got AA in my sync, I'm just pulling some data in, I'm just saying, give me some parquet data. So just pulling in a straight um, parquet data set. Um, doing anything special. I'm doing a summary. So I'm just saying, I want to do an aggregate. I want to take accounts. I want to take a total amount. I want to group that by my vendor name. And I'm just spitting out some real straightforward data. Again, it's dummy data. It doesn't make too much sense at the moment, but just the normal data flow activity kind of thing. And at the end in my sync, so I've said my name, this is where I'm coming from, my sync type. So the normal options is a data set. There's this new option to do this inline um, data set. So rather than having a data set defined in the rest of Data Factory or your Synapse Orchestrate area, I can do defining it inside this data flow. Uh, and I showed you that briefly before in a previous video when we were looking at Delta. So if you want to use um, the Data Factory pipelines to talk to Delta, it has to be through an inline data set. Same for CDN. So if you want to insert something into the common data model or read it from the common data model via Orchestrate, it has to be through an inline mapping data flow uh, connection. So I've selected that, so I've got common data model, ask for a linked service, and that's not a CDM linked service. That is just a lake linked service. So I need to tell it how to connect to the lake that contains that file system that has my CDF, CDS, CDM, whichever in there. Okay, in my settings, a load of things I need to set up. So I need to tell it what that connection is. So what's the file system that's inserting into? I need to tell it that corpus folder and the entity. So that's the folder structure that it actually know, uh, needs, needs to go to. So it needs to understand where is your data being inserted to, and so in this case, it was my taxi summary. So you need to know where that manifest file is. That's what it's trying to get down to um, inside my signup. So I'm trying to go down. It's in that cdn.json. It's the entity listed as this inside there. But again, it doesn't like a browser. You can dig in and see what's inside that summary. You can see what things are defined. I can go and find out that's the entity summary in front of go for. So it gives you a little bit of a hand trying to find this stuff. Only shows you things that have a manifest. So if you've created your CDS using the model or JSON, this doesn't find anything and gets very confused. If, you've created, if you haven't created your entity yet, this isn't going to work because it needs to have that manifest file existing already or the entity CDM definition file. Um, let's know where's the actual data living. You can point it to your data. You need to set, is it going to be CSV or Parquet? If it's CSV, you need to have a manifest file. If it's Parquet, it blocks that into default. And then you can see how it's going to work. So I could use this to insert data. So we've got those both sides of things. So we can use the Spark side if it's a little bit codey to create new entities and insert into entities on the fly. If you want something a little bit more regular, a little bit more kind of uh, defined, then we can use mapping data flows just to take some data from somewhere, transform it, and push it into our CDS. But either way, actually, we do now have some options to talk to the common data model uh, or common data service, depends who you talk to, um, from various places within both Synapse and Databricks now. So that's quite useful. Again, it is still in preview. So take it with a pinch of salt. So it'd be interesting to know how many people are planning on using that straight away. How many people are planning on going, you know what? We're using the common data service a hell of a lot. We've got a lot of people using Power Platform and building apps. We've got a lot of people doing like traditional analytics and doing data lake and data science stuff in a lake, and they don't talk to each other. This is the missing piece that we've been waiting for. And I'm kind of curious because I keep hearing it from clients. This is something they're looking for and wanting. But then it's really, a, it's kind of surprising that it is coming in. It's so preview and it's so new. I'm surprised I can't actually just in Synapse just go, here's a linked service to a common data model and just have that exposed as one of my linked entities. Maybe you will be able to. Maybe you can and I just haven't found it yet. Um, but yeah, it is kind of, there's a lot in the CDS and it looks like it is kind of this real vital piece for trying to do this cross communication between the Azure Data Platform and the rest of the Power Platform. But it's interesting times. So if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Are you going to use it? Let me know. Until next time.